Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you how to get from this to that, in other words, how to upscale an image by a factor of 64, which as you can see looks absolutely stunning. Additionally, we will discuss how to avoid losing the original image information during upscaling, as sometimes upscaling can completely alter your initial picture. Let's start with basics of how upscalers work to understand what kind of result to expect and which one are more suitable for you. To simply get it, there are two types of upscaling. The first one works through mathematical smoothening. It's like looking at a point on a graph and assuming that the missing point is probably somewhere around here. Essentially, the same thing happening with the pixels. Algorithms predict what pixel should be based on neighborhood pixels. There are many algorithms and they can be combined to achieve decent results, but only slightly improving the quality, making the image a bit clearer. The problem with the first method is that these algorithms lack information about the object itself. They can't recognize it and depend on the object as some that wasn't there. For example, small details on the skin, they just don't understand that a skin. They merely manipulate pixels among themselves. And this is where another approach comes in, a generative one or AI one, where we use a model like a stable diffusion or different upscale looks like in order to fantasize about what the image could be and simply add new non-existing before information. This approach allows for uncarable results in increasing resolution almost infinitely. We're only limited by our modern knowledge about the object and computational resources. That's it. Okay, let's go. As usual, open Google Collab Notebook with a link, which I provide in the description under this video. I made that notebook special for you, and it still works perfect without any disconnections, which, to be honest, still surprised me. So we need to run first cell, then download our model, step two. I prefer realistic vision v5, but you can use whatever you like. Just past proper link here. Then we need uh, control net models. A bit later I explain why. This cell downloads a lot, a lot of control net models, I think almost any you need. So it takes a bit more time, but to my mind uh, there is not too much difference between 3 or 5 minutes of waiting. Then we need to run step 3, run stable diffusion, and just wait a little bit. One minute, 37 seconds later. First glance, it seems quite simple. Just change your resolution here. Example, let's use UG format, and you'll get proper result with much more high resolution. That is not the case, because there's a problem. Stable diffusion models, especially 1.5, as realistic vision in this case, are trained on images with specific resolution, 512 by 512. So our model just doesn't know how looks cat in a full HD resolution. If you use high resolution, which is not suitable for this specific model, you might get some artifacts, uh, mutations and some strange pictures. As you can see here, that doesn't look okay. Even you slightly change your resolution here, might produce a bit distortion in the anatomy, in the faces. It will be quite hardly noticeable, but it definitely will be. And if you uh, meticulously look at the images in a CVTI, you probably noticed that sometimes a lot of images quite distorted. So this method doesn't work. Let's use our base resolution. So in order to upscale our images, we can can use this method, high res fix, and here we can change our upscaler, let it be latent, and our resolution. For example, we can use upscale by 2, uh, the final images will be 1024 by 1024. Uh, let's generate our image. So how does it work? Stable diffusion generates images with base resolution, 512 by 512, and only then, using specific upscaler like a latent or whatever you like, upscale the image to your final resolution, 1024 by 1024. Because we use latent upscaler, our image uh, might be changed significantly during generation, so you need to know that. If you generate images with control net, it significantly changes the final result. To my mind, in majority of cases, it's not uh, usable with control net. So, so let's discuss the situation when you already have an image and you need to upscale it. So we need to open image to image tab, then drop our image here. Let's choose this one. And here you need to enter your prompt. If you don't know prompt for the specific image, you can interrogate prompt by pressing this button. And after that, uh, stable diffusion model define prompt for you for this specific image. But I know prompt for this image, so I just press it here. And then we need to uh, choose our sample method. I prefer Keras. 
to M, but it's once again strongly depends on specific images. For art, for anime style, for real like images, uh, there will be different sample methods and different upscalers also. Now let's change our resolution. 1024 by 1024 and very important parameter the noise strength if we use low the noise strength we will get almost the same images uh, it will be better image in terms of resolution but still there will not be too much details as you can see now that looks nice but if you compare this image with real one you might notice that there is not too much changes. It's almost the same images, slightly better, but it's not what we want to make. So if you change your Denise stance significantly, you completely change your image. For example, let's try 1.7. We've got good results. Much better than previous one in terms of detailization, in terms of resolution, but as you can see, it's completely different images. So what you can do in this situation? The majority of YouTubers advise you to find the specific point of the noise strength which allows you uh, to get perfect results. Sometimes, in my experience, it's almost impossible to find these specific parameters. So the Reese um, probably can use another way with a control net. So in order to use control net, we can add our photo here, change our preprocessor canny which process ages of the images enable it and let's try generate this image is higher than other strengths and with the um, control net here we go we've got our result and to my mind it looks better uh, there is some strange artifacts on her hairs Let's try to use lower the noise strength and also let's use lower control net rate. Here we go, we've got our results and it looks better. Yes, it looks way more better. You can experiment with control net with different models in order to get your desired results. Because, as I said before, it strongly depends on your specific images on your particular case. Sometimes you can just find this specific point, specific parameter or the noise strands and get a good result without using control net. But as I said before, to my experience, very good to know that tricks with the control net. So let's save our image and then let's add our image here once again. In this case, it's not important to have prompt, just write something like a detailed and then in a script, so we should choose upscaler. SD upscale. We can't upscale our image using the same methods. Once again, even in a case with a Google Collab, we have strong restriction in our VRAM memory, only 16 gigs, which is not so big, surprisingly. So we should try to use SD upscale. It works quite tricky. It's divide uh, all images on small tile and process each tile independently, which allows you to generate images with a much more high resolution, but using your small amount of VRAM. Tile overlap, it's evidently how overlapped that specific tiles. So you can choose different parameters and it will depend on how much details in your images. In my case, I think it's not obligatory to use higher parameters and scale factor. Let's try to use four. I hope that our VRAM will be sufficient for that. And here we can choose different upscalers. And once again, uh, it will depend on your specific images. Let's try to use basic one, long cross. Don't forget to change the noise strands to lower magnitude. 0.1 will be sufficient, I suppose. And press generate. Here we go, we've got our results and here you can compare the final results. We use ESRG GAN for X plus and just for X. And here you can see the difference between these images. As you can see, for X looks way more natural, but there is some artifacts which you can easily fix in a Photoshop or similar software. But here you can notice that hair looks much more better. There is nearest and long cross. Once again, we can see the same artifact here. On, on her nose and left eye just a little bit but still it looks nice to my mind surprisingly better than the previous one especially i like long cross because here a face looks more natural and the final one it's anime style and you <laughs> evidently can say that there is too much difference it looks completely different so as i said before best upscale strongly depends on your specific user case in this case with this image uh, the best one was to my mind lancros the most simplest upscaler and for x esrg gun for x looks also quite good but i was surprised because i thought i was sure that for x plus esrg gun 
one will be my favorite one because in majority of cases it looks way more better. And as a matter of fact, you can also upscale your images here in extras in the same way. Just add your image here. Uh, you can combine different upscalers like Lang Crows, for example, and Nereus. You can adjust some parameters like code former visibility, which is responsible for fixed faces, as I remember. And you can combine these images, uh, these parameters, in order to get best results. But to my mind, it's not the best option, because there is not tiling, so you strongly restricted by your video memory. And I think most likely you won't be able to upscale your images by 4000 pixels. So to my mind, the best option to combine upscalers just to use Photoshop or similar software. And let me show how I always do that. Uh, we need to choose the best upscalers for our cases with best parameters. To my mind, this is ESRGGAN 4X and Lancaros, I suppose. Definitely not anime. So open Photoshop or similar software, it doesn't matter. And let's open our images. So once again, we can compare upscaled results and we can choose which is the best for us. Uh, to my mind, uh, the best EXGAN for X plus, we have the best hairs. So we can use hairs from this one. Just use a riser tool. It doesn't look good, I know that, but it, it's okay for our user case. We activate our Lancaros, and now we have our best hairs from EXGGAN for X+. Without them and with them, looks much more better. Uh, but here we can see that artifact, which is not so good. Let's fix our artifacts on her face. For some reason, the same artifact we can see almost on any upscaler. But it is not a serious problem, because we in a Photoshop we can fix it using different instruments, like a, like a clone, for example. It's not the best uh, instrument, but it's just, for example, how it might look. And let's fix her eyes also just a little bit. Now it looks better with our best hairs. And what about our painting? I use Photoshop better, so I can use our painting tool in order to generate her hair properly. Let's outpaint our image. The negative fill here and just leave empty prompt. That looks better. To my mind, this is the best one. And we can also try to generate a lower part of her body, but I suppose it will not work because of because of NSVV filter or Photoshop. But let's try. Who knows? Maybe it will work. But I'm sure that it won't. Definitely. Yes, I was right. Violated user guidelines. So let's add our initial image to Photoshop in order to compare it. Uh, there is our initial image, uh, and you can see the difference between sizes, which is just insane. Here we go, now we can compare our results. So what we have before, our initial image, and now our final results, voila. To my mind, that looks way more better. It's not ideal, there is some little artifacts, some problems with hairs, but you can work on that. You can fix all that problems quite easily. Here is just illustration how far you can go with stable diffusion in an upscale process. So I think that is success. That looks really nice. There's a lot of videos in a YouTube how upscale your images with a stable diffusion, but I try to make a bit different because it's quite hard to create upscaler version of your image, which looks the same as initial one. So with the help upscaler, is the upscale tiling, with the help of control net, you can achieve that result, which I think is really, really nice. I hope that you like this video. Let me know if you find this video helpful by pressing like button or writing your comment. Bye bye.